me to bring to, to the stage the gentleman of the hour? Yeah. No, that doesn't sound like you're ready. These gentlemen have put in so much for you guys. Let me ask you one more time. Are you ready for me to bring them to the stage? Yeah? So, here's what's awesome about these guys. It's awesome that their business does $50 million a year on Amazon. That's awesome. Yeah, that's what you can that right with us. It's even awesomer that so far they've already helped 2,000 entrepreneurs launch their own Amazon businesses. That's even awesome. And that's just the beginning. Yeah, you can give that round of applause as well. <laughs> it's awesome that they have been best friends for going on 20 years, which is something that you don't often see. And it's so great to see that from childhood to now ultra successful. But what's the most awesome about these two gentlemen is how much they care about each and every one of you and how much they want to see you win and how much they want to see you succeed. And so with that, business growth hacks. You remember what we just learned with regard to introducing people and bringing them to the stage. So you all know how we do it. And with that, business growth hacks. Get on your feet! Put your hands together and welcome to the stage! Show of hands one more time. How many people 
or came here to kind of see what it's all about. Awesome. Awesome. This is a, a graph of our, our company. Uh, this is years, and then on the right is sales, and on the left is number of orders. So the reason why I bring this up is because in 2018, 2019, you can see that our sales actually dropped by, what is that, maybe $5, $5 million? You know, but that year our profits went up eight percentage points. You know, so that's like a lot. We nearly doubled our profit that year. You know, so like even though the revenue was down, the profit was much higher. We did that by just retraining our buyers and making sure they're buying the proper items. So to just just don't be fooled by by revenue screenshots on social media. It can be very intimidating. You know. Well, absolutely. Um, the efficiencies. Efficiencies are so important. Uh, we're always showing you how to analyze products correctly, look at the history, you know, look at the keep a chart like a movie rather than just a snapshot of what the current buy box is. It's so important because then you go from numbers like 2018, where it looks great on Instagram, but 2019 is so much stronger. We're, we're purchasing less, which means we're producing less, which means we, uh, we lower our labor costs, and we're bringing in more bottom line at the same time. So this is historical sales data on four years worth of worth of sales metrics from our business. Um, and the reason why I point this out is because something that I think that is important is the, the cost of goods. It, it makes up about 41%. So this data is on, you know, probably close to six or seven million orders, right, Sebastian? So this is a lot of orders. So a 41% cost of goods is pretty reasonable. And now, now why is this a good number to know, right? Because if you're selling a product at, at a $10 list price, just by looking at this metric, you should know that you should be paying around $4 for it. You know, and if it's $20, you should be paying around eight. Now, instantly looking at that price, if it's 12, it's not even close to 40%, you're at 60%, you know there's gonna be no money on that listing. Right, so it's just a way to switch your perspective when you're looking at these products to make better buying decisions in the moment, which will generate more profits. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah? That right away, right away, that right there just helped our buyers start purchasing so much more. They wouldn't waste time analyzing listings if they didn't need that threshold. Just by looking at it, you know, if it's, if it's, if it's selling for 10 and we're getting it for 6, pass. Go on to the next. You, you don't even have to look at it. You just know you're not making money. Um, so it's a quick little product research tip. The second thing I'd like to point out is referral fee and closing fees. So. What's the average referral fee and closing fee on Amazon.com? Anybody know? 15, right? 15, right? Ours is one percentage point lower, which on $135 million in sales is about $1.3 million additional back into our pocket from capitalizing on some of the promotions that Amazon provides in certain categories for fee discounts. So I encourage all of you to look into that as well because there's discounts that can put more money back into your pocket in certain categories like grocery, and health and beauty. Is this growth hack number two? Employees. You need employees in order to expand. How many people in here are single operators right now, just operating by yourself? What about your wife? You can't both raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, okay. How many of you have one to five employees? Okay, five to ten? Ten plus. Okay. Okay, great. Right, so increased order production. This is like, it, it's, you can throw any, anything in here, right? This idio, um, you can do hire more employees, right? Decreases your production costs, increases your team morale, opens up new growth, and growth opportunities. You can throw anything in this. Absolutely, let's, let's try it again. Um, increase equipment, decrease labor costs. Yeah which is gonna increase efficiencies in production. Yes, yes. And that's gonna open up more opportunities with your suppliers. Yeah. So your team, right? This is your team, plain and simple, if you're doing wholesale at scale, right? If this is, even if you're doing really private label at scale, this is your team. Someone needs to, except you'll be using a prep center as your picker or packer, or you'll be just shipping it direct to Amazon, and essentially they will be your picker or packer. But it's the same process for any business model, right? You have a picker, someone who actually picks the product, moves it to a production station if you have stations, and then a packer, someone who packs the product, a buyer, someone who buys the product, and then a position manager, someone who manages those positions. And, you know, we're going to really touch on it more. i, I got to stress the numbers because I hear it from all of you constantly. But how do I know? How do I know whether I use a 3 
retail or whether I get my own warehouse? How do I know what, what's going to be more efficient for me and where I'm going to save money and how I'm going to be able to scale quicker and grow my business? Because at the end of the day, we want to scale as fast as possible without also scaling too fast, believe it or not, because if we're not prepared and we haven't had that cap paid for us, that could cause a lot of problems too. Now, a common thing you're going to experience in your business with these positions, it's going to be, it's almost like a battle between uh, your packers versus your buyers. The inbound versus outbound, right? It's an ongoing battle as you continue to grow because what, what, you, what you need to be looking at is weekly production numbers. So let's say your packers are producing 5,000 orders a week, right? This is a week. 5,000 orders a week, but your buyers are only bringing in 4,000. That's a whole day now that your, your packing staff cannot work because your buyers are insufficient, right? But now let's say your buyers are bringing in 8,000 a week and your packers are only packing 5,000. So it's like the constant struggle, either you need more packers or you need more buyers. Or you need more buyers or you need more packers. It's just always going to be like that. We're always reviewing these numbers every single week at our business and making sure we have enough to keep this staff employed, our packers full time, as well as this staff employed full time. Because we hate sending people home early. Right? These people have families to feed, kids to feed. We want to be able to provide for them. So if they have to leave early, that's not good. Right? And if they do leave early, a lot of times we just cover it and say, hey, we'll pay for the rest of the day. So right, things good. Listen, everybody, we appreciate y'all. We got a super great lineup. Devon's about to come back on stage. Enjoy yourselves. Have a phenomenal night. And stay late. Woo! Stay late. Keep going, everybody.